Hey YouTube, Cyan here, and between the hype for Fushuin and my love for comparison videos, today will be my first ever head-to-head -head comparison of Fushuin versus Luocha in a solo sustained battle. Just a few things I want to talk about before we begin. First off, by no means is this video 100% factual on who is the better character by any means, and we're just taking a look at their performance under the same conditions. So don't go around starting any drama or being toxic over this. It's just for fun, both characters are viable and great, and take this video with a grain of salt. Secondly, please do not just skip to the fight portion of the video, as there is a lot of context given before, and it will spread misinformation if you just look at the fight without everything before it. Finally, as this is indeed my first time doing this type of video, let me hear your feedback on things you want to see changed or added to this format of video, as I do plan on doing more of these in the future. And if at any point you find this video entertaining, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, comment down below on who you may want to see in the future. Now with that, let's get on to our two contestants. In the red corner, we have the Divination Commission's leader and temporary Divine General, Fu Xuan. For our stat spread, we are rocking a strong 9.7k HP, 1.5k defense, and a juicy 141 speed because I love going Sonic fast. We will use her signature light cone, she already shut her eyes because she has 100% faith in her victory. For our traces, we have a fully maxed out Fuswin because what kind of battle will this be if we don't put her at her maximum? Gotta love them juicy critical nodes on my tank though. Now, for our relic set, we are running a two-piece Longevous Disciple and a two-piece Messenger Traversing Hackerspace. There are plenty of viable options here, but I decided to go with the one I use majority of the time, since I love speed and I feel she is more than tanky enough to take majority of hits, as she is now. However, should you feel unsafe, feel free to rock two-piece Guard of Withering Snow. And for Planar Set, we are rocking two-piece Fleet of the Ageless because I love the additional health. And our main stats for the chest is HP percent, our boots is speed, the orb is HP percent and my rope is HP percent as well. Lastly, our girl will have no Eidolons for a nice fair battle. In the blue corner, we have our cunning traveling merchant who's clearly working with a cute girl in blue while carrying something in his coffin. Will this item in the coffin lead to his victory? Let's find out. For our stat spread, we have them at 4.4k health. 4.6k attack and the same juicy 141 speed. Yes, I tuned them to be the exact same speed on purpose. Now, honestly, his health could be a tad bit higher because I won't lie, his attack stat is freaking massive. Maybe committed a bit too much to it. We will use his signature light cone, Echoes of the Coffin, because all you will hear is Fuswin complaints after she loses. For Traces, we have another fully maxed out character because it would be unfair otherwise. Now, for the Relic Set, we are rocking a four piece messenger traversing hackerspace. I didn't really have a good enough substat two piece set, so each character will be a tad bit gimped in this department on the defensive side, which is fair. While our planar orb is the space shielding station, our main stats for each will be chest rocking attack percent, our boots rocking speed, the orb rocking attack percent, and the rope rocking attack percent as well. Honestly speaking, this is overkill in attack. He can solo full heal blade at this point. Could have used maybe one HP percent piece just so he has a bit more health, but this wouldn't have changed the outcome. So not really a huge deal, but this is by no means a guide, just showing what I am running. Lastly, our merchant will have no Eidolons for a nice fair battle. Now for the arena where we will be placing both contestants is the newly released the Swarm Disaster game mode on the highest difficulty. Because this is a roguelike game mode, we will have them running the exact same blessings and curio setup. If you're wondering how I can do this, all you have to do is close the application before the boss is defeated 
or your party is white and it will return you to right outside of the battle and you can swap your party from there. For our path, I've decided to go with propagation because I didn't want something that would affect either contestant's healing ability or defensive ability and try to pick abilities that would not make it too one-sided for either character. But this is why I recommend taking it with a grain of salt. Our disruption level will be 10. Personally, I wanted to go higher, but that would put us on the abundance path, which would make this a bit unfair to Luocha, as he already heals us to maximum health, and it would just make Fushuen's heals a lot better. Now, let's get down to the fight arena. But before we fully start, I want to make one very important notice about the gameplay for this video. You may see me not being the most optimal in terms of damage in this video. There are a few reasons for this. One this video's purpose is not to kill the boss. It's for our contestants to get beaten up and see how they handle under high damage scenarios. Two, my Embibitor Lune is far too strong and well, as you can probably see in the footage, makes quick work of this oversized cockroach. Yes, I know it's a beetle. And the saying of the best defense is a strong offense has never been truer words with this. Because of this, he will be limited to one ultimate per turn and no casting of the path of residence. Just to limit how powerful he is, so we can see each team get messed up for the purpose of this video. But by no means is this the perfect scenario, and I'm always open to suggestions for future videos on how you would like to see this approached. Also, for those wondering about Memory of Chaos, I tried it, and well, it wasn't a fair fight. <laughs> More like her stepping on Luocha because he provides damage support at E0, while he does not, so it's unfair. But now, on to the actual battle. We will swamp between each character perspective in this fight for each phase, starting with our challenger, Fu Xuan, and to start each battle off, I only used Branya's technique. In this area, it favored Fu Xuan too much, as she has the stronger technique. Let me know if you want me to use the main character's technique in future videos. Funny enough, even with Fu Xuan increased hostility, Branya takes a massive amount of damage early on. This is one of the reasons two-piece passerby may not be so bad, as recovering Branya back to a decent amount of health has to be one of our priorities. Dragon Boy does dragon things, please ignore him. Looking back at this, maybe I should have avoided Remembrance abilities, but oh well, I wish I could have skipped all the extra stages rewards or gotten the item that gives no blessing. Our first AoE attack practically doesn't do any damage to the team, which is a good show for Fushuin. However, the second does hit Fushuin for a decent chunk of damage, putting us in talent heal percentage. You may notice I have to cast Fushuin's skill each turn because of the damage Branya took so I can restore her HP back up. Also, one thing about Fushuin's Light Cone, by the way, it does not heal you for bosses with multiple phases. Only when battles start, it's on the screen, it will heal you. Let's go take a look at phase one for the Luocha team. While looking at the team, I just want to do a quick mention that Pella is going to perform better on Fushuin's team because it's more skill point intensive, while Luocha and Pella on the same team pretty much makes it non-issue, even though we're running Lune. Luocha not getting as unlucky as Fu Xuan does help, but I believe he would have recovered instantly anyways thanks to his passive heal. Just like with Fu Xuan, we don't take too much damage on our first AoE attack. However, Luocha does get slapped up a bit from this single hit, which the additional HP percent would be nice here instead of the super fatty attack percent. Luocha does get a bit lucky here with the freeze, so now we're stuck with a frozen cockroach, so we just coast into phase two with no real issue. Let's go back to our challenger, Fu Xuan. Phase two. This time, we don't get nearly as unlucky of a start and attacks are spread out pretty decently this time. However, AoE does take a quite a good chunk of Fu Xuan's HP, putting us into the danger zone. However, we do have talent charges, so it's not really too much of an issue. Right here, we get our first bug AoE explosion, which did a lot less 
damage than I expected thanks to Fushwin's damage mitigation. Sadly, the damage over time debuff from the bugs puts us under the 50% threshold slightly, costing us our second charge already. This is far from the ideal situation to be in, as you never want to be at zero charges, this early on at least. Not having some more defensive options like two-piece weathering snow is starting to show its merit. Or we can just burst it down and explode the boss, but where's the fun in that? Luckily, we get another charge and it pushes us into phase three. Now let's see how Luocha's side performs for phase two. Branya takes a massive chunk of damage in our first attack early on, but it's quickly healed back to full. Now, one thing to mention is because we take more damage without Fuswen, it does hurt the rotation a bit as we gain more energy, which causes me to have ultimate on Lune and Luocha's side before I attack. This causes me to make a mistake here, and I should have did his basic into ultimate back into its basic again, following my own restrictions. This situation does occur in Fushwin's side as well later, so it's fair I suppose, but I wanted to make mention of it. Sadly, we get our first death here as the Wiltshire falls slightly. Looking back at it now, the additional health would have helped him live with a small amount of HP left. However, looking at the following attacks on the rotation and the current health we have, have, alongside that Luocha's passive is on cooldown, we would have died regardless. We can see here Luocha's biggest issue being, do you have enough defensive stats on your party overall to take the hardest hits? Strictly speaking, if you do enough damage, it's not really an issue. But if you're playing your slower style, this is something you have to think about. Since we still have Fu Xuan on phase three, let's go check out her perspective. Besides not having any charges, we start off strong taking not much damage, and you get to see the issue I spoke about earlier with Lune having his ultimate at the start of his turn. But you can start to see each of these bugs AOE attacks tend to do roughly 40% of Fu Xuan's health, which puts us in the danger zone very quickly. And taking two of these back to back is just too much without any charges. We finally get Fu Xuan to fall, barely. You can argue at this point, this is where energy regeneration rope would have made a good difference because instead of dying to this next attack, we would have been able to cast ultimate and have our HP restored. And because we've never hit low enough, the HP rope didn't make too much of a difference. You can also argue two piece guard of weathering snow would have been nice here too, or the good old just kill it before it kills you approach. To name our winner for this would be Fushuan. But obviously, nothing here is perfect. From the perfectly fair blessings and relics to perfectly fair play, even the team build can be criticized to be honest. But this is just a video for fun to show them side by side in a harder situation. One reason I use these two runs is because they show perfectly what can happen in two bad situations for each character. What can happen when Luocha's team takes too much damage at once? And what can happen when Fushuan's allies get targeted more than they should. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video. Also, which character do you want to see in the future? Finally, are you Team Luocha or Team Fushuan? Thank you for watching. I will catch you on my next video.